Hello, dear friends. Here we are with another Spiritist Magazine program. We are here on the Spiritist Magazine Facebook page, Kardec Radio Facebook and YouTube page, and the Spirit Society of Richmond Facebook and YouTube pages as well. Sometimes we are on Instagram, so make sure you spread the good news of the Christ so that we can reach more people. And today I'm blessed to be with you here. I thank you for being with us. So every week at 8 p.m. on Tuesdays when this airs, I bring to you one article from the Spiritist Magazine. And I'm always going to remind you to visit the website of the Spiritist Magazine. There you're going to be able to download the PDF version of the magazine, which you're going to see on the screen shortly. That's what I use here most of the time. I want to show to you how easy it is to open a magazine on your phone, on your computer, on your tablet, read it, nourish your soul, just as Kardec Radio's motto says. Take it with you, and that can be the resource you use instead of the many not as superior, not as elevated resources that we use sometimes in our lives to cope with the different situations. So this is an excellent, excellent way of folks for you and I to gain knowledge. A lot of the teachings you're going to see are published firsthand in English at the Spiritist Magazine. And until we wait the publication of those books in English, that's the place we need to go. And as also, we need to exercise that muscle where we are always looking to seek the good, to read the good, to nourish ourselves instead of allowing um, the negative news of the day to take over our attention. So today's article is from issue 43 of the Spiritist Magazine. In this issue, I'm going to tell you exactly when it was published in October of 2018. Issue 43 of the magazine. And this article is titled Expanding Spiritual Relationships. So I encourage you right now, go to the website, download the app to your phone, uh, Android and Apple um, devices, your tablets, open up issue 43 and or download the PDF. And I'm going to share the PDF right now with you. So the title is very telling. So if you were to download the PDF version of the magazine, that's what the cover is. And there's many different beautiful articles about spiritist conduct regarding children. These are the thumbnails, spiritual hallucinations by Manuel Filomeno de Miranda. We have an article we've done before, let us understand. There's a whole um, Kardec radio Playlist about this book, Drops of Light, by Casimiro Cunha. We also have Love and Renunciation by Umberto de Campos, which should be from the book Good News. I'm going to check from the book Good News, which also awaits publication by by, um, the Brazilian Federation. Until then, you can read it here. And this is the beautiful article that we're going to discuss today. Expanding spiritual relationships. Question, first question is, do you know that you have spiritual relationships as much as we have relationships in the physical realm with the reincarnated beings that we relate to? Are you even aware that we are spirits living this physical existence, therefore called soul and spiritism? We are souls reincarnated on this earth to redress mistakes, to learn new things, to co-create in goodness. We've got to improve ourselves, and that is done for relationships. But now we're going to talk about specific spiritual relationships. This article is from the spirit, Euripides Barsanovo. You read it's personal, and let me make sure I can show it to you. One of what a read is personal looks like. I just had to reach a little farther from what you could see. This is a read it's personal. He started the first spiritist school in the world, the state of Minas Gerais. This is the article from him. 
And remember, every time we read something from an, an author, either the author is alive or discarnated or incarnated or discarnated, we are connecting with the mind of the author. We are connecting with the words. Our brains allow us to create mental imagery from what we read. That's what's very important that you have in the Spiritist magazine, the ability to create positive, influential mental imagery. So every time we engage with a content, your brain's creating those images and those ideas and those emotions stay with you. So that's why it's very important, especially during the planetary transition, that we create positive mental imagery, ideas, that we visualize the good, that we see the good, we seek the good, we mold the good, we feel the good, as Emmanuel would say, so that we can create around us this positive environment. So let's reevaluate everything that we read, everything that we see, because it has also to do with the spiritual relationships. The first and foremost, so we have relationships with the Creator, right? God created you and I. And there's a loving God loves us today as much as during the time of our creation, many, many billions of years ago, and still going to love us when we reach the state of a pure spirit and the state of a Christ spirit, for example. But we have a relationship with our mentors and guides. We have spiritual relationships with those who enjoy the things that you and I enjoy. So if you like to read good things, nourishing things, enlightened things, those spirits are there with you as well. And then if we engage in lower vibrational level reading, movies, violence, sex, pornography, gossip, murder, then the spirits who enjoy that kind of content are also with us. So our spiritual relationships are very important. And today we're going to be talking about expanding them how we recognize the importance of them and how we, we expand them. So here, is a, this is what the PDF version of the magazine would look like if we were to download it to your computer. Very easy. I'm going to zoom in and out and remove the thumbnail so there's a little bit more space for us to read. The first thing that uh, Rupi Zubarsanov will tell you and I is May the sublime friend strengthen us in the redeeming road. That's our master God. May God. Imagine if we started everything in the world by saying, may Jesus strengthen us on the redeeming road. So he's already telling us here that the road that you and I are going through this lifetime on this earth is a redeeming one. Remember, when we are together here on Tuesday night, we are creating this positive vibrational current. We're reconnecting with the with the outers, such as Spirit Euripides Personal. We're connecting with our mentors. We're connecting with the mentors of the Spiritist Magazine, so on and so forth. And I want to hit the highlights of this article because I want to entice you to go there and, and read the article for yourself. It says, the conquest of the new lights on the paths of life has provided the human beings with a series of precious, precious resources in the footsteps of physical health. The most varied healing elements are facilitating individual routes on the planet. So you, my brothers and sisters, have to your mercy a generous source of the bless these blessed resources for the recovery of energies spent by diseases in general. Every sick person can find this manna that flows from divine mercy. It is enough for us for this to keep alive the lamp of the faculties of feeling. So here we have it. He says to us, precious resources in the footsteps of physical health. The most varied healing elements are facilitating the visuals of the planet. When we think about going back to the basics and reading the book Genesis, there's a whole chapter about God, and there Kardec and the Good Spirits will bring to us the, the concept of divine providence, allowing us all of the resources that you and, ha you and I have in today. Those are those varied healing elements facilitating our route on the planet. The health of the planet is also dictated by the health of each one of us as well, right? 
So he says, so you, that's you, dear friend, who is watching this, have to your mercy a generous source of these blessed resources for the recovery of energy spans and disease in general. So you, you and I can tap into those resources. There's merciful, general source so that we can heal from the inside out. In the book Evolution to Worlds, Andrea Lewis tells us, that our spirit's mind controls the cells of the spiritual body that then command the cells of the physical body. Therefore, by healing our, our thought patterns, by working on learning new skills of tapping into those general resources, we can start healing from the inside and then we will externalize a healthier being. It does not mean that if you just think the good, do the good, you're never going to have ailments. We have many examples of people who live their lives to the benefit of others. They still have physical illness. Physical illness or these ease or challenges are blessed ways for you and I to learn. We have to change that mindset. They're difficult. They may be painful. They cause stress. They got they cause suff uh, They can cause suffering. But it's up to you and I to tap into those resources. And it says the celestial friend, our Master Jesus, gave us the example practicing in the highest sense the terms of the law of justice through the cultivation of love, seeking the perfect lesson by example. The master even left us the beauty of forgiveness for those who could not understand the suburb sacrifice. And what was the mission of the divine lamb but the chain of potent bonds of bountiful understanding and sublime love? These are many different ways that we can think about our master Jesus, our guide and model, allowing us these examples, Jesus was always on, on his way to doing the good. Everywhere he went, he spread the good news. He did good deeds. He was the perfect example of detachment of material resources without disdaining material resources. He was also very generous, very kind. And how can we know all of these? Not only superior spirits, just as Euripides Barsanova reminds us, but also the books of Humberto de Campos, such as Good News, the books of Neo Lucio, such as Jesus in the Home. There are examples of how we can do that. And what is he doing right now? He says, the master remains awaiting our good will in the service of fraternal solidarity. What a beautiful message for us today. During these times of planetary transition, currently when this first airs, we are dealing with the COVID pandemic, where many of the ills of the world are exposed to us through the power of sharing, sharing information and resources through the news media, the social media, so on and so forth. So the master is waiting you, dear friend, for your goodwill so that we can fraternally serve and be solidar and offer solidarity to our brothers and sisters in humanity. Now, how can we do this? He says, the cultivation of devotion, the consecration of renunciation, in the exercise of goodness in all hours of our day. So if you're watching this live, we are around 8.15 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, or we, you may be watching this on demand. Maybe the good spirits are there helping you tune into this. Remember, we're expanding our spiritual relationships today. So are we exercising goodness in all of the hours of our day from the moment I open my eyes and return from the spiritual realm during sleep? I open my eyes and I say, thank God for another day. I brush my teeth, thanking God for having them, having the ability to have the hands, the resources, the toothpaste, the toothbrush, the, the house and the bathroom, because there are people who don't on the earth and can't pr provide for themselves the minimum level of hygiene and dignity. So are we exercising goodness when you drive down the road, visualizing goodness in all of the other drivers, understanding they, they know they may not know about the truths of the spiritual life? 
then you can be forgiving and kind. You can respect the rules of the road and follow the law and the speed limits and the traffic lights. So that, that way you're exercising goodness because in order to live in a society, my right ends when yours starts. So we have to all have rules and order. Go to the book No Solar. There's plenty of order in colonies such as No Solar. And there is a reason for us to know of this as well. So let's exercise goodness in all hours of the day. What else? He says, let us seek the beauties of the good in all and everyone. And little by little, we shall find a sure and certain path for the indispensable renewal. So are you seeking the beauty of in all and in everyone. When we look at folks, do we go straight to what is missing? Again, when you wake up in the morning and you look yourself in the mirror, do you go straight to the shortcomings? Which are not really shortcomings because we have the physical body and the appearance that we need in this lifetime. But it may be the message that I'm receiving um, through the means of communication that I consume in each and every day? Do I see the amount of goodness, kindness, friendship, and love that I've already acquired and I'm focusing on where I fall short? That's what it is to seek the beauties of the good in all, in everyone, no matter what they do. Let us not forget the duties of fraternity amongst individuals as the family of the spirit is great and enlarged. Remember that our neighbor is humanity. Doesn't the enlightened lesson of your moral obligations point to that truth? We are all spirits living in this physical existence. We just have differences. We are unique. We are born in different places. We speak different languages. We have different abilities. But we all belong to the human race. We have different circumstances that lead to different growth and different opportunities and needs for each and every one of us, that does not mean we shouldn't reach out today. And he says, it is necessary to expand the scope of spiritual relationships every day through the ever-increasing interest in the welfare of all creatures. So how is the circle of your spiritual relationships today? Can you perceive the presence of your garden angel, a mentor, a spirit guide? in your life, inspiring you to see the beauty of the good in everyone, to be kinder. When you are in despair and suffering, you can feel the loving caress of their, their loving smile towards you or their loving embrace. So when we are interested in the welfare of all creatures, we build spiritual relationships because as much as you have a mentor, that person who is suffering, who you went to spend an hour a month with doing some activity also has a spiritual mentor. They have the spirit friends around them as much as you do. And then when we expand our own needs, we remove our own needs to seek the needs of, to fulfill the needs of others, ever increasing interest in the welfare of everyone, not just me, not just the people who look like me, not just the people who live in my neighborhood, not just the people in the same tax bracket. Those are temporary circumstances, but also those who suffer in areas of war, but also those who are homeless, also those who are um, undergoing difficulties due to natural disasters, such as hurricanes, monsoons, earthquakes, those who are um, unemployed, those who are disabled, those who are temporarily sick, those who are filling the ICUs today in our current pandemic when this first airs. Are we looking out for the welfare of all creatures by using the resources the divine providence have allowed you and, uh, you and I to have, such as the vaccine, wearing a mask, Socially distancing. There's nothing to do with removing your freedom. And it's not being about political. It's about looking at the science. When we are have, we're expanding the scope of our spiritual relationships. Because when I don't look out for the welfare of all creatures. And I look out for my own self. And now I might be prejudicing someone's life or hurting someone. 
I'm not expand. I'm expanding the scope of our spiritual relationships in the opposite direction that I want by gaining adversaries. When my actions hurt others, those spiritual friends could come and come and be against me now. Instead of expanding the scope of my spiritual relationship, when I take the precautions of public health for the welfare of all creatures. So that's something for us to think about. Today, make a list of your spiritual relationships, the people who love you, you love them, you relate to, you work with. All of those are opportunities for you and I to tap into those relationships. It says, those who remain attached to their own interests, forgetting or indifferent to the fate of other homes, have not yet understood the true meaning of love. When I only focus on myself, my things, my family, I still don't understand what it is to love. There is, are you going to argue with me? Well, but there is a law of preservation in the Spirit's book, but there's also a law of society, the law of justice, love, and charity, right? The law of preservation dictates that now I take the precautions and health measures that allow me to be a responsible citizen in the world as much as taking the trash out is a public measure of health because it doesn't attract the vermin the trash is not decomposing attracting uh, vultures so is being healthy eating well exercising seeking medical treatment when sick wearing a mask, social distancing, and if you are medically able, taking the vaccine. All of those are actions you can take, not only to protect yourself and your loved ones, but to look for the welfare of everyone. But if I'm only thinking about my own interests, I want to be cont contrarian, then I am demanding my rights without thinking that my rights also have to do with duties. There are duties in order to collect the right to have to come up with the fulfillment of your responsibility towards others. We don't live alone on the planet. There's not only one being. If today, God forbid, everybody else is appear but you, you can you won't probably be able to survive for a little while. We are, we are here together on this together. You didn't build the roads you ride on. You didn't build the schools. You didn't teach all the children in the world by yourself. You weren't taught. Maybe it's a few percentage of us, but someone had to create those books that came before. And I could go on and on with examples of how we are in this together. I didn't make the microphone that is reaching you. My voice is reaching you right now. Or the camera or the computer. Or even psychograph this beautiful message from Maripis Barsanovo, although... My heart goes out to them, to all the mediums and all the spirits that through the Spiritist doctrine have given us the opportunity to be here today as this platform that we can use to connect. It says, to the Spiritists will be required much love in the multiple manifestations of charity because the Spiritists received much from mercy through the understanding of the eternal clarity. We have received much from divine providence and from the Spiritist doctrine, just knowing that this is not the end, just knowing that you're more than the physical realm you live in, knowing this is one in many, many thousands and millions of reincarnations, as many as need for our spiritual growth, knowing that we have agency in making the decisions with our free will today. Yet we are free to sow, but the harvest is mandatory. So I can I can I can choose to sow selfishness and pride, but I will collect the fruit of that selfishness and pride later. Because now my selfishness and pride is not in um expanding, not expanding the scope of the spiritual relationships with an interest of the elf welfare of others, but only myself. But if I am sowing the good, if I'm helping others, if I'm reaching out in all manifestations of charity, which include being here today, sharing this teaching so others can reach, but includes going out there, 
spreading the extra bread in your home to those who need, donating to the food bank, volunteering in whatever activity claims your heart, going to the homeless, going to the orphanages, going to the animal shelters, going and doing everything you can to decrease your consumption, to decrease your footprint on the earth. That is all charity. So it's praying for the ones we love. So praying for the ones we don't like yet. So praying for the ones we have difficulties with. That's all charity as well. Much was received by you and I as a spiritist. Then we have to use that teaching. Those talents were given to us, that abilities, that knowledge. Therefore, we need to not bury the talent because buried talent as you would find in the chapter 45 of the book, Jesus in the Home, Jesus says, buried talent is useless. So when we know of these, we have to do something with it. Because once now you can't undo the knowledge. So what are we going to do between now and the next time we meet? And of course, I'm going to ask you to stick around because the program with our dear Carol Correa of the divine laws comes right after this one at 9 p.m. Let us seek peace within ourselves in the practice of the, the law of justice within the Christian principle. Do not wish for others what you do not want for yourself. We do not wish them lack of anything. We wish them what we want for ourselves. Do to others what you desire for yourself. So if you want to be understood, Understand others. Do you want to be forgiven? Forgive others. Do you want to have things, give things to others? Do you want to have knowledge? Share the knowledge you received. Do you want to have a, a thriving spiritual center? Be the first one to volunteer. Do to others what you desire for yourself. And may Jesus bless you. May Jesus bless your family and all of the spiritual relationships that you have cultivated during this lifetime spiritual relationships that are cultivated as much as physical relationships in order to be friends with others we have to cultivate in order to be in family and relationship we have to cultivate those relationships so let's work on this so the source of this uh, book uh, this article is from the book of deepness the spirit and compromise by corina avelino through the medium alira bessa frança almoí and this message was psychographed by the medium Corina Novellina when she was incarnated in April 4th, 1957. And this book, yet to be in English, but there are several messages from this book where in the Spiritist magazine. So I'm going to invite you to go out there, share the good news, share, download the articles, download the PDF. The app is a beautifully made app. It's all 100% volunteer. There are costs associated with doing an enterprise like this. So there's always also an ability for you there to donate if you have that ability in this lifetime so that we can continue to do the work that we do. None of this is done for profit. And we are here because we gain so much more than we take. So I'm going to invite you, dear friends, to join me again next week and between now and then may you expand all of the spiritual relationships you have already cultivated and many many more through the goodwill the good actions good thoughts good feelings that you have today i thank euripides Parsonovo and corina novelina for bringing us this beautiful message and the master jesus for allowing us to be here today until next week many blessings stay well stay safe i'll see you soon